What's up everyone? In this video of the day, I'm going to talk a little bit about seeing the target and kind of go over some of the fundamentals of that and why this is important and also why it's one of the most common mistakes made in trap shooting. See you in a second. Alright, so I got the idea for this video from an individual that commented on another one of my videos that I made previously, so thank you for that, I really appreciate it. I love getting your video ideas from you guys, so keep them coming. Um, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and move into the topic of discussing um, why seeing the important target is important in trap shooting, and that's because the, the more you see the target, the better that you can see the target, the higher the chance that you're going to be able to break that target. Generally speaking, in trap shooting, the, the guy that sees the target the best is going to be the one that wins most of the time. So, um, you know, all else being equal, if you're on a level playing field in terms of weather and experience level and all that, if one person is seeing the target better than the other person, then the person that sees the target better is more than likely going to win that day. So, it's absolutely critical. And I'm going to go ahead and get into um, the three stages of seeing the target here. So, like I said, I think there's three stages to this. The first stage is before you call pull. The second stage is when you're actually pulling the trigger. And the third stage is just simply after you're pulling the trigger, hopefully you're looking at that big old smoke ball and the target's not keeping on flying. Um, unfortunately, if you're like me, the target keeps on flying too much sometimes. But you want to look at that big old smoke ball. So let's go ahead and let's move into talking about the first stage here. And that is the pre uh, the pre-shot almost, the pre-pull part of seeing the target. So a lot of this comes to the point of hold point and set and your eye set point. You don't hear eye set point talked about nearly as much as hold point. And what eye set point simply is is your ability to set your eyes before the target. So when you have your hold point set, which is where you're setting your barrel at before the shot, but so this is your barrel, where are my eyes set at in relation to that barrel? Are they up here? Or are they down here? That's your eye set point. Um, I've seen guys vary um, from having it all the way up here. Personally, I'm somewhere a little bit around right in here, probably about this much above my barrel. Um, so I'm pretty close to that barrel. That's what works for me, but everybody's going to be a little bit different based on their experience level, how good their eyes work, uh, the sighting conditions that day, all that kind of stuff. But once you get it figured out, it's really not going to vary that much. It's going to be something that remains pretty constant that, that you should be able to execute consistently. And I can tell you that getting that eye set point figured out is really key to shooting. So um, if you're somebody that's breaking, you know, say a lot of 93s, 94s, 95s, 96s, if you figure this out, then there's a really good chance you could get into that 97, 98, 99, and 100 range just by simply getting this figured out. Um, that was my personal experience with it is, you know, I was kind of in that mid 90s and then I jumped up into the upper 90s as soon as I started clicking on this issue. And it really makes the game a lot easier because you're seeing the target so much better. Now, don't get me wrong, you still have to focus on the other fundamentals too, but this just makes it a lot better whenever you're seeing that target and it looks really big as opposed to it looking really small. It makes a big difference. So the eye set point is key. Your whole point is also key. I feel like if you have a good eye set point, you can kind of overcome a little bit of a poor hold point, but you can't overcome a poor eye set point by a great hold point. So make sure you had the eye set point correct. And if you have both your eye set point and your hold point correct, then you're gonna be in a really good position for success. So the second thing I wanna talk about is what happens during the shot. So whenever I'm in that pre-shot pre uh, area of getting my eyes set, I have picked out my spot that I want. And you're not looking at a spot in the distance and specifically focusing on it. You want to have a soft focus. So for example, you know, if I'm looking right here into the camera, I'm looking right into the lens. So that's my hard set point. But if I take a little bit more of a general look, just at the room in that direction, that's a soft focus. So if you have a hard focus, you're specifically focusing on one thing, whereas a soft focus is more of a general focus of an area. 
That's what you want to have whenever you're shooting is that soft, general focus in your pre-shot. Now, whenever that target comes out, this is where focusing and having a good hold point is key. You want to wait till that target comes above your barrel till you go get it. So I have my hold point set, let's say I'm three foot above the house. So I'm going to sit here, I'm going to wait until I see that target come up above my barrel. Whenever it comes up above the barrel, I'm going to transform my eyes from that soft focus into that hard focus right on the target. Wherever it is that I want to see it. So if it's going straight away, I'm probably going to look, for me, I tend to look really close to where the black ring on the bottom and the orange collide. If you don't have a black ring, if you're shooting on targets that do not have that black ring, you can kind of just look in the middle if that's your spot too. But everybody has a little bit of a different spot depending on where your POI is. And, and just, just you, you know, what your, your preference is. So, but for me, that's where I look. So I'm looking, you know, right at that middle. If I have a straightaway, I'm looking right almost dead in the middle of the target. Um, it varies a little bit left and right, um, depending on wind conditions and all that. But um, I'm looking at that dead center for that straightaway. So I go from this general focus of looking out into the trap field to this hard focus right on that target, right on that spot of that target where I want the middle of my pattern to just hammer. And hopefully it'll do that. <laughs> but I'm looking at that area and I'm waiting on it. And once it comes above my barrel, I'm going to get that hard focus and then I'm going to go get it. So, you know, I'm just going to go make, hopefully make a good move and follow through, keep my head on the gun, all that good stuff. But all that is a product of seeing the target good. You can have a great hold point set. You can have a great move to the target. You can have keep your head on the gun beautifully, but if you don't keep your eyes on the target, it's not going to help you that much. You have This is really a critical component because if you're not seeing a target well, it can actually throw off all your other fundamentals, make you think one of them's wrong, whenever you really, the only thing that's wrong is you're not seeing the target clearly. So make sure that you kind of transition, that you let that target come above your barrel and then you lock on to the point of the target. So I'm not just taking a general look at the target. I'm looking at a specific spot on the target that I want the middle of my pattern to absolutely hammer. And then go get it. And then the last phase of seeing the target is what happens after you pull the trigger. Now the reason this is key is because of follow through. If you keep your eyes focused on that target, then it's going to help you follow through. So, you know, let's go with the ideal circumstance of you absolutely hammered the target. Um, I want to kind of look where the most of that smoke is. So, um, a lot of times the way that you hear shooters, and I found this to be very beneficial and very true, if you're somebody that's new to shooting and you really want to work on your follow through, work on following the biggest piece of the target to the ground a little bit. And that's a product of keeping your eyes locked onto that piece. So I'm going to lock onto that piece and follow it to the ground. But getting back on track here, after I hit that smoke ball, or hopefully I hit that smoke ball, I'm going to keep my eyes kind of where the middle of that smoke ball is, just where that heaviest portion of the smoke is for just a little bit, just to follow through. I mean, I'm talking maybe half a second, three quarters of a second. It's not like I'm sitting there doing three or four seconds. The thing where you follow it to the ground is great for beginners to really learn to follow through. It's not a common practice that I think you want to make because you're going to be holding the gun a lot longer over the course of the day, which can cause wear and tear on your body when you're doing week, two week long tournament, which, you know, the stamina is a big part of shooting and, and you know, you don't want to give uh, the other competitors an advantage. They're already really good, so you kind of want to watch that part of it is the the fatigue part that that if you're going all the way to the ground it could cause but it's a great way for somebody to learn to, to follow through for just a few shells to kind of get that in their mind but I'm going I'm looking at that smoke cloud or the biggest chip of the target the most I shouldn't say the biggest maybe the most identifiable chip so if, if I'm looking at the target and it breaks the biggest one you know it may go at an angle that I'm just not really seeing but it, I'm going to look at that biggest chip and just kind of focus on it and follow through and then come back down. And that's the last phase of seeing the target. So guys, I really can't emphasize enough how important this is to breaking really high scores. Um, like I said, if you're somebody that's kind of been low 90s, mid 90s for a while, it could possibly be just because you're not setting the target, you're not seeing the target well. Um, 
and it can really wreak havoc on your consistency too, especially if you're some if you're somebody who knows how to see the target well and you're fundamentally sound with that, you're also going to see yourself improve on the days when it's tough to see the target, those cloudy days. So one last component that I want to talk about um, on this issue is lens color. Make sure you get your lens color set correctly. This is really, really key to seeing the target well. Is you got to have that lens color figured out what you want. For me, I use the same lens color probably around 90% of the time or more. Um, and, and most guys that I've seen shoot, they're the same way. They find that lens color that really works for their eyes. And they just don't change that much. Now, sometimes the conditions dictate that you change. You have to have the ability to do that. And one way that I recommend that you do that, just go out and look at the guys that are shooting before you. Look at their targets. Really notice um, whenever they're breaking the chips, like it kind of go, comes down into the background or the grass. Um, you can look at the chips and whatever lens color makes those chips pop when they're in that grass, that's a good indicator that's going to be a great lens color for you. Um, obviously the best way is if you get the opportunity to see them when they're flying in the sky. But sometimes you don't always get to watch the target fly all the way to the ground because you know, the guys before you may get the opportunity, they may be really good. So they may be breaking almost every target so you may not get that chance. So another great way to pick your lens color is to watch it when it goes all the way to the ground and you're watching those chips fall. Whatever makes those, those chips, the color of those chips pop really and look really good to you that could be your lens color for that day really good indicator of that so thank you guys so much for watching today i hope this helped out again thank you for the idea i really appreciate it keep those coming i like the video ideas love hearing from you guys so please subscribe to my channel here you can watch another video here go ahead and have a great rest of your day